Well, today's the day. Today is Saturday. You know what that means? It's time to go to the theater. Uh, I haven't been to the theater to see a show in, I think, decades, a long time. But going to see Dear Evan Hansen, thanks to my friend Belinda, who didn't want to use her ticket. She has season tickets. Uh, I'm so excited because this is an amazing story. And I'll tell you more about it. But um, I'm just so happy to be going. And the easiest way to go, because parking downtown is really a mess, so I drive to the local Safeway. That's the grocery store. <clears throat> about a mile from my house and then come down here into the metro station it's not called metro here what's it called muni and the muni train will take me right where i want to go and uh for only i think 250 something like that so um that's the way i'm going that's why i'm here and there should be there should be a train here in two minutes and then we'll be on our way Boom. Well, I'm here at the Orpheum Theater. I got a little lost. I got some bad information, so I had to walk a few blocks. Not great for my back, but we're here. They're taking tickets, so I'm going to go in. I'm so excited. So I'm inside. It's beautiful. I forget how these old theaters are so beautiful and ornate. I'll try to show you a little bit of it. And pretty good seats. I think I'll be able to see all right and um, hopefully not bother the people next to me. Excuse me? Hopefully not bother the people next to me by crying too much. Um, you can hear the kind of notification sounds like uh, you're getting an instant message or something. The story kind of hinges on the fact that the main character gets involved with tell some lies that snowball and get him involved with becoming kind of viral on the internet. So this is kind of symbolic of going viral on the internet and having him pop up everywhere. Um, yeah, so I'm going to take my seat, settle in, and enjoy the show. Two hours later. Wow, is <laughs> all I can say. Um, I've seen, of course, I've seen this online, um, you know, bootleg copies of the Broadway performances, but it's so different seeing it live right in front of you. And the music is just more vibrant. I don't, that's the only way I can explain it. They did a great job. This was not the Broadway cast, this is the touring cast. And um, since it's a, it's a Saturday matinee, it wasn't even the usual Evan Hansen. It's the guy, one of the understudies that does the Saturday matinees. So I was a little disappointed because I, I read up on the, the guy who's playing Evan in the, in the touring company, uh, and then it wasn't him. But the guy who did it did a good job. Um, the woman who plays Heidi, his mother, has a couple of really poignant moments. And the actress who was playing that role here, nailed it. She really did a great job. Um, it's also interesting being in a live audience and hearing some of the reactions around you. There was one particular point, um, kind of the apex of the drama, and I heard the woman behind me gasp audibly. <gasps> and so it was nice to know I'm sharing this emotional experience with everybody. Um, I did cry. Um, 
mostly just a little light sobbing throughout the whole thing and not the full on ugly cry bawling like I, I thought I might. Um, I didn't hear a lot of sobbing in the audience, but I know people cried. Um, it's just such a moving story and such an interesting story. Um, if you don't know the story, let me recap it for you. There's a young boy named Evan. He's 17 years old. He's maybe on the spectrum. He's awkward and socially awkward. And um, his mom, his, his mom is a single parent. She's working a lot. She has him go to a therapist, who assigns a little, gives him a little assignment to write a letter. Dear Evan Hansen, today's going to be a good day, and here's why. Kind of a pep talk to himself. So he decides he's going to finish this one at school in the computer lab and, and print it out there for his next appointment with his therapist. When this other boy, uh, who is kind of a loner, dark kind of character, um, kind of mean, gets it. And uh, oh, and Evan has broken his arm over the summer. So when they meet, he says, "Hey, I, I, I'll sign your cast." He's like, "What? No, you, you you don't have to." He's like, "No, come here." And he writes Connor really big on his cast. And he says, "There now, now we can both pretend we've got friends." And then he looks at what he picked. He goes, "Oh, this was yours. I found it in the printer." Wait, are you writing creepy stuff about my sister? And he gets mad and storms off. And Evan's like, "Wait, come back with that letter." <laughs> that's personal stuff that I'm revealing and he worries about it for like three days and Connor's not in school gets called into the principal's office and Connor's parents are there and they said Connor has killed himself and we found this letter to you in his pocket and before Evan can say no that's not his right I wrote it to myself they get very emotional and he ends up not really going to be able to articulate that and, and they're like this is all we have left you know because he was they weren't able to reach their own kid you know and he's like just keep it just just keep it and they said come over for dinner and um, tell us more about your friendship because we didn't even know he had any friends and so he ends up going over there telling stories about this friendship that never really happened it makes him feel better at some point there's a turning point in the song that he sings where he's telling this lie and where he realizes that lie means as much to him as it does to them. It would have been nice to have a friend like that. And by making up these stories and these fake memories, basically, he's soothing himself as well as making the family feel a little bit better. He's got a crush on the daughter, the, the, the dead boy's sister. They become close. Um, he becomes close with the family. It's like a second family to him. Not that his mom is bad. She's just not around. And at one point, they invite her over. Oh, and then they start the Connor Project at school to remember him. And they're like, Evan, you knew him the best. You need to be involved in this. So he's forced to keep lying and lying about this relationship that never happened and creating false e fake emails to give his parents. And then they get published with the Connor Project. They raise money for this orchard that they never really went to. They're going to redo this orchard. They want to raise all this money. And he gives a really moving speech, um, as it turns out, at a, an assembly, which goes viral online. That's the, the tech tie-in. Remember, at the beginning I said there was, had to do with tech, and this, it goes viral. And people all over the country are like, you've got to share this. It's a really inspiring speech by this kid named Evan Hansen. And he's like, remember, he's like a loner and kind of awkward. And all of a sudden, he's getting this attention that's very uncomfortable for him. That's act one. Act two, um, it starts to spiral out of control. Um, the people with the school project start to doubt they were really friends because some of the emails don't quite make sense. The family decides to offer the money that they saved for Connor to, Connor to go to college to Evan because they found out that his mom isn't, doesn't have a lot of money. She's a working mom. So they bring her over and she's insulted by the notion that she can't afford to take care of her son. And then to find out that she, he was spending all this time with them and she didn't know about because she gets very defensive and very angry. Um, it finally all kind of comes to a head and um, Evan has to finally fess up to this family as they're, you know, and he says, no, no I, I never did it. I wrote those. He didn't write it. We weren't friends. We never went to the, to the orchard. I broke my arm on my own. And as we saw in a sequence kind of a, where he's talking to the ghost of Connor, he says, um, you can't even be honest with yourself, Evan. How'd you break your arm? Does it broke my arm? 
falling out of a tree. He goes, did you fall or did you let go? And it's just like, <laughs> that's one of those moments. I think that's when the one behind me gasped. So he had been suicidal himself. And now he's got to just say, no, none of this was real. I made it up. I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can say to excuse it. But really, didn't everyone else need it and want it a little bit too? And then has this great, huge number at the end where he just talks about, you know, he's always running away and this was all a lie and, you know, he doesn't let people see the bad part of him and he just feels like a, a collection of broken pieces and wonders if everyone saw what was really there, would they hate it as much as he did? <sighs> then his mom tries to comfort him and sings the most amazing song um, called So Big, So Small. Look it up where she expresses the fact that she, she's, she'll be there for him always. And eventually this will feel like a long, a long time ago, but um, right now it feels very big, but in the future it'll feel so small. And the last scene is where he meets up a year, uh, several months later with um, the girl Zoe in the orchard that they raised the money for, and he said he, he never felt like he deserved to go in there, but when he called Zoe and said, can we just meet and talk? This is where she wanted to meet, and he asks her at the end, why did you want us to meet here? And she said, I wanted to make sure you saw this. So it's kind of the good that came out of all the bad. And then he gives this final little monologue that says that maybe someday some kid will be here feeling like they don't belong, and they'll look at these trees, and they'll want to climb and see what it looks like from way up so high, from up so high. And maybe they'll think about letting go, but maybe this time, they'll hang on and they'll keep going and that's the good that comes out of all of this mess so it's a great story right it's it's a character you, you care about you can relate to the whether you're the mom you're a mom and can relate to the struggles that moms are having raising their kids or you remember being a kid and feeling like an outcast any number of these characters you can relate to and the drama is great. There's some, the lying and, and what's going to happen. You're just like the whole time going, how's he going to get out of this? My God, he keeps lying and nobody's catching on and now they want to start an organization. Now he went viral, blah, blah, blah. So finally, um, you know, it, it, it's just, it, it's a great drama. So I'm glad I went. Thank you again to Belinda for giving me the, uh, the ticket to go. Thank you, thank you. It was a great experience. And if any of you have a chance to see it in whatever form, online or in real life, or even listen to the music, I encourage it. So thanks for coming along with me today. Um, do all the stuff down below. And I'll see you next time.